Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be talking about this scammer again. I did make a video before about this guy's antics with his fake dupe mod, but I saw he didn't seem to get the message uploading a new video, and uh, the YouTuber never got around to taking this channel down, maybe they'll finally do that. But there is something interesting about this guy, which makes him worth a second video, in my opinion. Now, what I didn't know, because nobody... At least nobody I can think of, actually. I need to turn off... I, I need to actually, because I got Minecraft loaded on here. I need to turn off the sound in this uh, so that we're not uh, bothered. So, you may know this guy for his scam dupe videos, but what you may not know is he is simultaneously trying to be a real YouTuber and has somewhat of a community. Which is just bizarre. Especially because, of course, people subscribe to him and maybe join his live streams, which are normal, as far as I can tell. And then they're getting this in their subscription feed, and of course they're going to think, oh yeah, great, uh, let's do this. And we can even tell, because this is the live streams he does. Uh, he, he mostly streams on this place called Donut SMP. I've never checked it out, but it seems to be a decently popular server. He even has a Discord community. Uh, where he hangs out with people who watch his live streams. I checked. Nobody's messaged about the malware in his dupe mods. I haven't joined. Uh, we'll see see what happens there. I actually found out as well that he'd actually joined my Discord server. So I guess we're even now. Um, so yeah, he, he does these live streams. Uh, what? You know, I... I yeah. Love it, man. I, love it. I guess it's content. It's fine. Uh, it's just really, really odd to me. Oh, is that like a keyboard cam? Yeah, he's got a keyboard cam. Like this, this looks legit, right? I mean, this is legit. You know, he's not. But but then he goes and posts this, and we'll go over this. And this is also the most legit looking right, thing. Welcome back to another dupe video. Today I'm going to be showing y'all how to dupe in any Minecraft server for the latest version 1.7 and 1.4. I've tested these. No, you, you'd see that. What would you think? I would think, okay, this is real. Uh, you know, th this is a guy. It's not an AI voice. This is his real voice. This is his, like, real skin. Uh, he's got everything set up here. You know, he's you got, he's got talent. Him. Unfortunately, he's putting it to uh, misuse. He also, as we saw in the last video, AstroTurf's Reddit about his scam. It goes and posts about how Geekbone's dupe mod is legitimate. It is not. But we have downloaded it. It's called Dupe Utility. And the only thing it's duplicating uh, is it'll dupe you. But it certainly isn't going to be uh, duplicating any items. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, let's check it out. I think I finally got the VM stealth enough that we won't have to use any hacks to get this to run. So, I'm going to add it to our mods folder. And now we've uh, got the game. It is just waiting to launch. And let's see what happens. Oh, right. Yes, we have to install Fabric API. And our game has just started, uh, which means we're in big trouble. Oh, oh, the PowerShell has already uh, started spawning itself. Oh, let's see what comes next. Uh, looks. Oh. Oh. Wow. <laughs> this is what it feels like to get hacked in real time. Oh, our game just crashed. Well, that doesn't really matter because we are already hacked. I'm not sure if the thing just terminated itself uh, or if uh, that's... I'll run auto runs in a second. I mean, it's possible as well, because this is a rat. So it's possible, although I don't think he's that quick. But that, that'd be something if he just immediately figured out what was going on. That was quite a long chain, and it looked like it was in temp uh, service host.bat. So let's see. Oh, and suddenly it does. So it does break the game. I don't think that's, I don't know if that's intentional or not. Let's see what that msconfig.exe that was uh, spawned by the malware has done, if anything. Now everything looks normal. But we do have a new msconfig.exe that we cannot seem to do anything to. Uh, we could try hooking it with x64 debug. Now, that created a really strange section in our registry uh, containing a bunch of what looks like base64 now, if you note these characters are the same, uh, what seems to happen here is this gives us some indication of the order of these things. Now, I couldn't easily guess what these things are purely from their values, and they don't uh, decode directly, which means there's probably encryption here. But that is an interesting idea. And what we have here is an epic nest of an obfuscated batch file. Now, 
this type of nonsense is enabled because of a specific property of MS-DOS batch files, and that is that if you attempt to call an undeclared variable, instead of throwing an error like every sane programming language, MS-DOS batch files uh, will simply pretend that your error, that your um, non-defined variable doesn't exist, that it's set to null. Uh, the reason this is helpful is they can just pad it with this so you can't easily figure it out. Now if you look, like we can see an equal sign here, and from knowing how this setup works, I can be almost certain that the chain of commands here is actually a going to be a set variable equals, and then here we've actually got another variable, so they're setting up a chain of these uh, to make this as difficult as possible. Now there is no way you would ever manually clean this. Lucky for us, of course we don't have to. So what is this whole mess of this batch file doing? Well, last night I did a bit of work on trying to statically deobfuscate it, and ultimately I couldn't fully get through, but we got some of the gist. So we can see that they really work hard to make sure that you don't get any of these commands. So we go through a bunch of set loops, and then about halfway down the file, here is the real payload. Now it may not be immediately obvious what this setup is, but it's obvious that this is not actually batch files anymore. So what exactly is going on here? Well, there is one hint left in the registry. Uh, remember that weird key we found? Well, there's this one. And yes, that is in fact nya as in Japanese for meow or cute, because this is called Omni Ominai Rat, and it is in fact an anime reference. So uh, that is in fact uh, what you think it is. So now here we can see a few things that are actually related to the key. You Now, I ultimately solved this by going through the PowerShell. This is the key right here, and this is the IV, this one. So what I did is I uploaded the uh, script after I'd gotten it reasonably deobfuscated onto any run. I used Script Tracer, and when I caught the decryption, I simply uh, got GPT to then make a Python version of the decryptor. After doing that, we end up with these three files, which are in fact the real payload. We get a 65 kilobyte file, which appears to be another decryptor. We get what looks like the actual rat, this one, and then we get another piece of the rat. Now, I did briefly go through these in DNSpy. They are very obfuscated, but luckily, thanks to signature detection, we don't have to do any guessing on what these are. It's a different project. I'll just upload it again so that you can see it. And immediately, we're getting a ton of hits. Now, this does look like it's mostly the packer getting detected, but I also tried uploading the batch file, and while very few antiviruses did detect it, Kaspersky turned out to be our savior telling us exactly what this is. This is a Trojan Dropper Bat on my gen. Uh, of all the engines, you got to respect Kaspersky for actually naming these things properly. That is exactly what it is. And Onimai is a Japanese manga series, different product. So the best way to tell if you have this is simply to go to your registry, go to software, and if you see either of these, you are infected. Now let's see if Sofa Scan and Clean can set us all back to normal. Now wait a second, what is this update? It, it mostly found my analysis tools, but what is this update.exe? So I did just check to confirm. This is the same file as in the template, so this is simply a false positive, meaning that in this case, Sawfell Scan and Clean has not identified any of the malware, which is especially concerning given we have the extracted pieces, and it would need to find the encrypted loader as well. So I don't think any scanners are currently detecting this, so I'm just going to recommend uh, reinstalling. While I was researching this, I also found a Ring 3 rat removal tool, and I was actually briefly convinced that was malware because it gets a ton of detections from Windows Defender, and most interestingly, uh, it seems the way that people have managed to get a ton of hits on this thing, which does practically nothing. I, I don't know if it's actually of any use. They made a fake triage report, which is something people are now doing, where they will upload the innocent file to triage to get its hash in the system. They will then, in the triage VM, download a rat to make it look like the first file is a rat. You can catch this by watching the replay, but it has caught me off guard before. Uh, not, not that helpful to this situation, I just thought I would mention it. It is invasive, it is not one of those stupid little python rats, so this is a full-blown rat attack. Uh, 
they will get absolutely everything. I think this guy is just using this for Minecraft account stealing. But there, this is a serious level malware. This is seriously obfuscated. Do not go near this. And hopefully YouTube will take this guy's channel down because it is completely ridiculous. So that's going to be all for me for now. Please do leave a like if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. Bye.